Greg Ostrowski, the CTO advisor with Cisco App Dynamics. Thanks for joining us on our Tech and Sec Weekly. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Chris. Very good. We're going to be talking uh, into a report, the shift to a security approach for the full application stack, basically diving into DevSecOps uh, and what Cisco App Dynamics can do. This is a very powerful platform uh, and obviously very, very uh, important and useful, I think, uh, in application development and application security. Uh, CTO advisor, maybe just talk us into your role and uh, sort of where Cisco App Dynamics is at at the moment, and then we'll dive into sort of just walking through some of the key findings out of this report. Yeah, perfect, perfect. So as a um, as a CTO advisor, I get the I get the pleasure of meeting with many executives at our at our organizations who are customers of ours, and the topics range from a, a myriad of things. It could be from market trends, things that are happening, uh, strategies to be able to build build around observability bringing in security into the mix. Um, a lot of folks are moving to the cloud or a lot of folks are adopting cloud services. So they want to know, you know, what's the best best practices to make sure that the performance is there and make sure that things are secure. So when you kind of look at it overarching, it's a, it's a very fun role to be in because I get to talk to so many customers, you know, spanning from both commercial and public sector. So you get to see where the needs are in different areas. But ultimately, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a role where I get to engage directly with the customer make sure that our product roadmap and our product direction is fulfilling the needs of what they have. But ultimately, it's really about a, a customer first role. Well, I notice it's a CTO and not necessarily a CSO. How, yeah. What's your touch points with security or do you find that uh, holistic approach where security is embedded anyway? You know, really, when you kind of look at it from the overarching approach, I mean, when you look at applications in general and, and you look at the way that they've evolved over the last uh, five, 10 years or so, and even the, the last two years, a rapid yeah. adoption of cloud services and, and things like that. And you kind of look at the biggest, the biggest value you have with applications or one is they're, they're driving business outcomes. The, so the business are becoming dependent. And when you have consumers leveraging an application, they want to be performing, but they also want to be secure. Like they, always, they automatically trust that you're going to be secure. So if you're not building security into your development strategies, your application strategies, then you, you're at risk of, of um, losing your customer trust and, and, and brand reputation and, and uh, deteriorating the revenue for the organization. So when you kind of look at it from that mix, I mean, security and applications are becoming tighter and, and, and uh, closer aligned, uh, mainly because of the, the big demand that the business has on driving the, the best experience for their consumers. Well, I think that's uh, the other match with when you apply that security well and you have that visibility into the users and, and not necessarily their behavior, but you have that security mindset as yeah. to monitoring uh, what they're doing. You get a lot of business insights and application insights. And Absolutely. again, you deliver a better experience for the user, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, and it's one of those trends right now that is uh, evolving. So if you think about if you think about the way. IT operates for the last, you and I just had the conversation before we started here. We've both been in the industry now for <laughs> pushing long. 30 years, right? You kind of roll the clock back. Everybody worked on their own individual domain, right? You know, the network team works mm. on the network. The database works on the net database. The database team works on the database. The security team is in their own silo. Developers are in their own silo. And when you, when you are so dependent on the app to drive the business, you've got to have that you got to have that full application stack view, especially when it comes to security. So you can't have this, this mindset of going into the war room when there's a problem and saying, oh, it's not my problem. It's that guy's yeah. problem there. So when you kind of look at the way things are evolving, moving to that DevSecOps model helps you bring security into the application development cycle. So you're not doing this you know, six month or annual audit for security. You're, you're doing continuous monitoring for uh, application threats and, and vulnerabilities that you have there. So when you kind of look at that change, it's, it's, a, it's an old, a fundamental shift that's, that's ongoing right now in the industry. Well, it, always, it sounds common sense to me, but it's from these reports, you did a, a interviews with 1,150 IT professionals, and they are still grappling with the technologists not talking to their security team or they're not aligned at the same time. What is that gap? Is it a language problem uh, between the two? Uh, is it just a different risk perception? Because it just doesn't, uh, it, it, this is an ongoing thing that just seems to, to be a problem for enterprise to, to grapple with. 
Oh yeah, and you know, if you kind of refer to our our report that we had put out, where we where we uh, interviewed 1,150 technologists globally, uh, even focusing on um, Australia as one of our key key yeah. markets. You know, if you kind of look at the like I was going back, you know, about that how the the application has evolved, and you look at folks that are now introducing um, new capabilities. And if you kind of roll, if you kind of think about it too, developers are now pumping out new capabilities on a daily basis. So application code and, and the application stack is is continuously changing. So now, you know, referring to the report, you know, eighty three percent of the technologists based in Australia felt that the rapid innovation especially during the pandemic, came at the, came at the expense of having a, a robust application security process. So the speed and in, in development of applications are, are ongoing to help build new features, but the security methodologies and the practices that they have in their organizations are not keeping up that same level of mm -hmm. pace. So ultimately what happens is when you're adding new capabilities through cloud services, you're not taking away something that you've previously had from uh, you know, an on-premise or a traditional based application, you're expanding to it. So you're ultimately creating the, you're creating a larger attack surface that enables more places that a, that a, that a hacker can get into or a bad actor can get into to create a, uh, to create a, um, uh, an exploitation of data or, or attack an application. So kind of looking at it from that point of view, you know, a lot of folks recognize that the issue is there. It's just that they still feel concerned that, they're not moving fast enough or they're not adopting the new practices and especially moving down that, that path of a DevSecOps model, which has been growing in, in, uh, in popularity over the last couple of years, but still not to the point where it's, um, it's completely encapsulated the market. Yeah. And you mentioned it was global, but also across uh, sectors as well. So uh, there wasn't any sort of key trend, but there's top six application security challenges uh, for this year. Lack of visibility into the attack services is one. Uh, prioritizing threats based on severity impact. And again, that's a good one in terms of perception, uh, discovering protection of sensitive data. Maybe just talk us through the sort of the methodology that Cisco App Dynamics applies, because it's a, it's a platform that you would sort of, all the teams are working in, isn't that how that should work? So really that visibility and risk assessment should be getting done almost in a live format with the team working together. I'll give you, I'll give you a couple really concrete examples. So you're correct. I mean, App, App, uh, App Dynamics provides an observability platform to make sure that all the teams can have the ability of troubleshooting, getting down to root cause, fixing issues before the the, uh, the end user is impacted, but also bringing security into the fold. So what we do is we built in a uh, a, a runtime level security product, uh, Cisco Secure Application, that enables you to start to automatically detect threats and vulnerabilities with the application. So I don't know if um, you remember Log4j that came out approximately two years ago. And I want to give you this as a really concrete example, because I still talk to customers struggling to find out what's happening. So Log4j was a library that was, that was used very commonly for applications for logging purposes. Very, you know, used in almost every Java application. Now, the challenge what happened was, is that when that first hit the market or if it hit the industry, it was detected. Um, the security teams would, would grab a spreadsheet of all the applications and hand it to development teams and say, these are the ones that have Log4j, find out which ones are, are impacted. And the developer would look at it and would be like, well, I have no idea. You know, you have 150 applications you just were handed. How do you know which ones are, are impacted? So what we have done is by creating a Cisco Secure Application, we're able to scan that library in runtime, automatically detect that that vulnerability is there, also let you know if, a, if, a, if a, um, uh, a hacker got in and exploited that threat, but then also initiate a block so that that, that library can be um, prevented from running and, and effectively neutralizing the risk to the business. Now, that's one aspect of it, right? So now within, with that being said, you know, I've heard of customers that had hundreds of applications and they ran secure app, or Cisco secure application on it, and they were able to do that within 30 minutes. Now, if you think about that spreadsheet mentality where you're handing a spreadsheet to the developers to go through all 150 applications, that's, li that's literally months of work. Like you have to go through and scan through all the code, find out where Log4j was, and then, and then resolve that through an upgrade or, 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 or uh, fix some other way. Now, you might just delete it altogether and choose not to log. I don't know why you do that, but you, know, you have options. 
So, so when you kind of look at it from that fold, it's, it's very challenging. Now, a layer above that, one of the, one of the key factors that you um, just mentioned from our report is about being able to understand the, the impact or the, uh, the, how to prioritize when issues come up. So in some cases, you'll get many or you know, 50 or 100 different alerts coming in that you have threats coming in. How do you know which ones to attack first or which ones to go fix first? And it's really a big challenge because what happens is if you, if you don't have something in place that's enabled to analyze that for you and say, this one is a top critical threat, it's actually been exploited by a, by a, a hacker, that's the one you got to go hit first. But if you don't have that, you're getting into the security limbo where you don't know where to start. You don't know which ones are most impactful to the business. So thinking it from that mindset, the change is continuous monitoring or continuous uh, checking for threats and vulnerabilities with the app as it's being used. So you can resolve that in a, in a very, very quick manner so that the end user is not impacted. And again, if they get impacted, that's where your, your brand reputation starts to deteriorate and they start to lose trust in you as being a, a secure company. Well, you mentioned that security limbo uh, in the report, about 58% found themselves uh, dealing with uh, security limbo. Just talk yeah. us through some of those key benefits in, in terms of the security, reduced security risk, that runtime, that uh, checking the code as well for those unknown uh, sort of vulnerabilities, there's too much code. How much machine learning is in there as well, or is that getting applied uh, at all? Oh, it's a it's a it's a, uh, a a fair amount of machine learning in that. So one is you got to be able to to, to um, you know scan the applications in, in in runtime. So that has to happen continuously. Second part is how do you analyze which ones are being um, considered high risk, right? That's through an AI engine that's that's enabling you to start to detect which ones are are um, you know the highest probability to impact your business in a negative manner. Uh, being able to, to understand which ones have been um, infiltrated by a, by a hacker. That's leveraging machine learning. So when you bring it all together, a lot of it is machine learning type, uh, brought into the mix, but going to the overarching platform for full observability, there's machine learning all over where you're helping detect root cause, whether it's a problem with the, the actual code being written poorly or is a threat from a security perspective, or you may have other areas that are impacting the application. It could be the network. And this way, when you're, when you're coming together from that uh, war room or resolution perspective, you have a lot of information already to know what's going wrong. And then the teams that are, that are uh, directly impacting, like if it's the network, you, you pull the network team together, you figure out where the problem is and you get it resolved before it becomes uh, a detriment to the, to, the, to the business outcome you're targeting. And that's where I was heading is you, you need that machine learning to scale it up. You need these tool sets. You mentioned the spreadsheet before, which would be a red flag for anyone uh, in this area <laughs> when they're getting handed a spreadsheet. But yeah. again, in order to scale, in order, particularly for those you know, business uh, critical applications, you need that visibility and you need those security controls in place in real time, right? There's no, there's no checking and working your way backwards uh, in a yeah. specific manner. Hundred percent. And when you when you think about it in in this grand scheme of things, when you know the the application is now starting to adopt cloud native technology, microservices, containers, things that are only there for a moment in time and close down. Your your uh, I think I mentioned this before. Your your attack surface expands, but also to be able to properly observe everything going on from both performance and security standpoint, that's consuming a lot of data. You're pulling in a lot of metrics, events, logs, traces coming in that, that give you that, that valuable uh, uh, areas to pinpoint. But it's so much, it's almost impossible that a human can do that. So if you don't have machine learning to be able to correlate that, that data coming in, you're not going to be able to get quick results to understand if it's a security threat or a performance issue or, you know, the, the end users having bad experience. Now, we'll keep the audience wanting more and having a look through that report. But as a platform itself, uh, sort of any new features that are that are on board uh, in, the, in the recent times? Or uh, do you find it's just getting more powerful in the back end in terms of those engines and, and the way they apply? Last time I looked at Cisco App Dynamics, there was it, all, the way, all the way down to the, the way that the user even holds the device or where the device is uh, and, and the circumstances of that. How, how deep and granular uh, is the platform now? 
Oh, it's it's expanded quite dramatically. I mean, adding in, uh, you know, there's been a big shift for open source uh, with with especially with cloud native technologies to be able to ingest uh, open telemetry, things like Prometheus, all into a centralized platform. Um, from a security perspective, we've we've created additional integrations with other Cisco tool sets. You know, I mentioned before being able to detect if there's a uh, vulnerability within one of the libraries of the application. But we can also detect if there's a bad IP that's ap uh, going after the application. So there's ways of that we've expanded over the last uh, last um, couple of years, but it's just continuous. It's really about um, being able to do more analytics and more machine learning on the data that you pull in to gain those insights, both from performance to the business correlation and the business outcomes you're looking for through security. A lot of things happen from, uh, you know, as folks are moving to the cloud, they're looking at cost management, being able to understand how much is that workload costing me as it's running in, in, um, in the cloud. So being able to have all those pieces tied together uh, makes it very comprehensive, but it's also about making sure that, you know, number one is, is the end user, making sure the end user has the best experience. But also when you're thinking about the idea of having your, your, your uh, business outcomes being driven by application performance, you also need to um, you also need to make sure that you uh, your costs are in check, right? So this way, if you're if you're overspending in the cloud, you're cutting into your margins. So there's a lot of things that come into play, and you know it's kind of funny. I always I always make this comment when I speak to uh, a lot of executives, especially ones like us that are in that uh, you know 30 years in IT, in IT. But if you remember back in uh, 2007 2009 ish time period. They had what they called the consumerization of IT. That's when business leaders lost faith in us technologies to be able to drive the right business outcomes. They felt they had better technology at home. So that pendulum has completely shifted yeah. to the technologist's favor, where the technologist is becoming more of a business driver than a cost center. Well, one last question. What's the onboarding process? Is it just a matter of uh, they sort of upstart, upload their code? If they have existing applications... Uh, how would a sort of a customer be onboarded into starting to use this and bring their teams on board? From the full application stack, you know, we're, we're a resident in the runtime. So we know the code that's that's there. So we we see all the, the data points coming in. Now, from a customer, if you want to leverage our, our the security product I mentioned, Cisco Secure Application, it's literally toggling it on. And then we start to start to, um, we're, since we're already in the runtime, we start to look for those threats and vulnerabilities within the application. So it's very, very easy to set up and it integrates with other security tools. So other other security SIM tools, if you know, this is one of the bigger the bigger um, questions I get from from security teams are like, oh, do I have to use app dynamics to be able to get my alerts? And the answer is no, we can actually feed those alerts into any SIM tool that the security yeah. team would use, which is which is actually a, a bigger it's a little bigger in importance than I'm, I'm kind of alluding to. Because security teams like to use their tools. And by being able to just share that data with them so that they can have the, the alerts and the understanding of what's going on from a security perspective within the application stack, then um, it makes a very, a, a very soft landing to be able to, to bring the security teams into the fold when it looks at that, that uh, overarching view. Well, all I can say is if, uh, from the audience perspective, if you haven't had a look at uh, Cisco App Dynamics as a platform, uh, then I don't know where you've been. You're obviously maybe not in application security, <laughs> but uh, you'd definitely one that you need to have a look at. Look, Greg Ostrowski, the CTO advisor. Uh, where are you based, Greg? I am based in uh, the mountains of Colorado. Nice. Okay. Oh, I was there earlier this year as well. Uh, oh, but beautiful. thank you very much for joining us from uh, Colorado. I was in Colorado Springs, uh, but you're the CTO advisor with Cisco App Dynamics. Pleasure to have you back on our Tech and Sec Weekly. All righty. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for having me on.